JP Morgan Deep Racer International Speedway here in Las Vegas. This is one of the innovations that we're going to look at later on today. Uh, this came out of Tampa, uh, the child of our innovation team down there, uh, and improved by our Buenos Aires team, uh, and that brings you the video today. We use this for our global finals, which we run in October. And the point of it is to give that atmosphere to the event that we run to get people interested in what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, the atmosphere is absolutely key. I'm going to start with a quick um, poll. Um, very simple, just raise your hands. Who would like AWS to fund the uh, ticket uh, into reInvent, the travel and the accommodation for one of your Deep Racer participants or yourself? Large show of hands, excellent. You've come to the, uh, the right place. Um, my name is Stephen Carrod. This is Eva Peniel um, from AWS. I'm from JP Morgan Chase. Uh, and we're going to talk to you today about the program that we've put together at JP Morgan that has enabled six of our racers to qualify for uh, the reInvent uh, finals this week in a position so that you can then build your own team, take the lessons from that, improve upon it, and do it for yourself. Um, I should say that everyone that participates uh, in this program is a volunteer. I'm not paid to do this. Uh, they pay me to do financial operations, um, which is as simple as turn it off when you're not using it and pick the size that you need. And again, I say the purpose of this is to tell you what we've done, why we did it, what we've learned, how you can build on it, make it better, and come and challenge us. So who are JP Morgan? Um, JP Morgan is one of the largest employers of technologists in the world. Uh, we have 270,000 270, employees worldwide, 55,000 of those are technologists, and 35,000 of those are developers. We move between nine, or we move between nine and ten trillion dollars every single day. We are what, the first. Uh, bank of choice for nearly half of all Americans, uh, looking at mortgages, credit card payments, sort of finance loans, um, and Chase Online. I had the pleasure of working with the Chase Online team a few years ago, um, and they take downtime incredibly seriously. One of the things that I learned was that if you are ringing the uh, Chase Online help desk because you can't get onto the system, and say you're in Delaware, and say you're using XYZ telephone system, if that XYZ telephone system has got an issue, they already know that, and they've already informed that telephone provider that they've got an issue with their customers in that region. That's how much technology matters to that particular team, or for all teams, to ensure that we really understand and deliver um, for our, our, our customers. So you can imagine that technology is at the center of everything we do. Our Deep Racer program is designed to upskill our people in an interesting and innovative way. It's, it's, it's not about getting the car to go around the, the track quickly. It's about the surrounding technologies that you need to learn that enables that to happen. So JP Morgan uh, started our cloud journey about four years ago, uh, building the integrations that we needed to deploy cloud native applications into the cloud in a secure and resilient manner. In the first year, three large applications tentatively dipped their toes into the cloud, and we now have a cloud-first agenda. Operating in the cloud requires a change in culture. It's a fundamental re-education towards a new normal. What does that mean? So on premise, a server is like a car. It's yours 24 by 7. You maintain it, you power it, you clean it, you upgrade it. It's yours to love and cherish. In the public cloud, a server is like a taxi. You press a few buttons, it turns up, you use it for a period of time, and then when you finish with it, you wash your hands, it goes away and somebody else hires it. If you were getting a taxi home on a Friday night, you wouldn't get out, walk towards your house and go, do you know what, I might need a taxi on Monday morning, I'll leave it there until, until I need it. And that's the way you should think about it. Our staff are learning a new operating model, new model, a new model, new tools, new processes. It's a complete change in culture that people need to understand. And we're using the Deep Racer program 
to start that journey so they can understand that. We also like a little bit of racing, so we will be talking uh, about that. So the Deep Racer Learning Program is there to facilitate that piece. But it's more than just facilitating that learning, it's that broad spectrum, and that's what I'm gonna keep coming back uh, to that point. It also encourages innovation. It's our pros that you can see down the front here that also run the innovation stream. That's no coincidence because it's the pros that want to spend less money and want to do better log analysis. So they are incentivized to do that uh, innovative work. And we've done some work to share that with the wider audience. We've open sourced some software this year. Uh, and again, we'll talk about that briefly a bit later. We've also used it for wellness. Uh, during lockdown, we were encouraging um, our uh, staff to get their, their families involved. Whilst a deep racer model can behave like a petulant teenager doing exactly what you uh, told it to do, but not what you meant it to do, um, we wanted people to involve their families and get them involved with this so that they can learn a bit about technology and see what it is that their, their, their families, parents, carers um, do for a living. I'm trying to convince my family that I don't come to Las Vegas to race cars for, for a living, um, but uh, they're not having it. But ultimately, it's a learning program. It is not get people to reinvent program. It is a learning program. It is about teaching people about the public cloud. Okay, so the program was born in Chicago in 2018. Uh, it started small, but immediately started adding value. Um, the people were starting to play with the AWS console. They played with Deep Racer. They started writing, writing code and in, inquiring about reinforcement learning. They had a local rival, and they started to race. And that rivalry is really important. It gives you an incentive to go a bit quicker. And if you want to go a bit quicker, you need to start looking at uh, other tooling and, and ways of making, it quick, making yourself quicker. In 2019, other cities started dabbling in the, uh, in the deep racer, but London really kind of grabbed the ball by the horns, uh, and that started the internal rivalry. Um, we would race, there was then 200 people involved, two offices, we both had our own tracks, uh, so we could compete. Uh, that year, uh, when Chicago were racing their local rival, I'm pleased to say they requested a model from London, which we duly dispatched, uh, and that was what won the event for us. At the bottom of the screen, uh, you can see our um, pre-launch uh, for the 2019 season. On the left-hand side, you can see our track. Around the outside of that track are some barriers, which are collapsible fencing, strangely bought from Amazon, uh, with a uh, tablecloth, a disposable party tablecloth over the top. Uh, we will come back to that as some work that we're, we're doing on that a bit later. 2022, uh, we've seen uh, exponential growth. Uh, we're now run, uh, racing in 22 cities. Uh, 5,000 people at JP Morgan have gone through the program over the last three years. Uh, they've ac had access to the AWS console, EC2 instances, S3 buckets, Python, SageMaker, Jupyter Notebooks, and reinforcement learning. Uh, we have 2018, uh, reInvent 2018 tracks in 18 cities, uh, physical tracks. And in Bournemouth, we now have an oval pop-up track, which we use for um, uh, smaller events. Again, the program is designed to, to upskill our uh, internal employees. It gives them the opportunity to race against colleagues in the same office, colleagues in offices around the globe, and against firms externally, universities, we'll come back to that later, and individuals around the world. And they started collaborating. They wanted to reduce costs. They wanted to visualize their logs. So it grew beyond teaching about AWS products and machine learning to building these tools, creating quizzes. Again, I think it was Buenos Aires that created the quiz first, uh, and the JP Morgan International Deep Race Speedway that we saw at the beginning. Uh, key point, you know, I've already mentioned this. I'm going to say it again. You know, it, it's about getting the car to go around the track quickly, but it facilitates a massively diverse learning and other opportunities to innovate uh, in everything that you do. As I go through this, the, the, the slides and explain in more detail, please recognize our scale. Uh, we may have a team doing a particular role. You may have an individual doing multiple roles based on the size of your uh, organization or your, um, uh, yeah, your organization or your size of your program. So this year we introduced the driving license. 
Um, this gave us a dedicated curriculum that people could follow so that if they weren't uh, winning, at least at the end of it, they'd have a certificate that identified a certain level of training that they had gone through and shown that they were willing to invest in themselves uh, and be successful. Uh, this also helps us with the internal um, movement of people. We want the, the biggest the biggest thing that we, we see and excites us the most, the, the thing we've achieved best this year, is seeing people using those skills in their current role or moving into teams to be able to use those skills. We find that with the skills that they've got, when the application team that they're in is moving to the public cloud and the manager of the department is saying, anyone got any public cloud experience who wants to get involved, they can put their hand up, they know how to get access, they've got some basic understanding, they can get the team up and running, and they're generally interested and uh, enthused about uh, the public cloud, and that is absolutely key. So last year at reInvent, and this slide was created before yesterday, as you can imagine, uh, we came first, second and seventh. We have the 2021 uh, Deep Racer champion in our midst. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had six teams enter the finals of 50. Those six teams qualified for the final 32. Two of those teams qualified for the final eight. Unfortunately, those, first, those two teams only came fourth and eighth. Uh, first, second and third was taken uh, by NYCU, which is a university in Taiwan where the students are learning the use of machine learning in gaming. And they've really raised the bar this year and next year, and this comes back to my point about the rivalry, uh, we will need to make sure that we up our game to come back and, do, and, and, and have a, uh, give them a good run for their money. But again, it's not about the racing, it's about the learning program of what we are doing. So, Early in 2021, I was about to get run over by the momentum that the program had got, so I needed um, volunteers for each of the different work streams, or I split it up into work streams to, uh, to help me out. Um, we're going to go through a few of them here. Um, the executive sponsor. Your executive sponsor is absolutely key. Our ex uh, executive sponsor is the head of our infrastructure department, a uh, very senior uh, gentleman. Um, very, very passionate about racing and education and learning. Um, he's will give you the funding. He'll make sure that you've got a budget that you can do the spending for. Uh, he'll, he'll make sure that you've got spaces for your tracks if you're going to do physical racing. And we'll talk about physical and virtual racing later. He will sign off travel. And why is that important? It's important because as a firm, as a financial firm, we cannot uh, accept the uh, travel and hotels to reinvent for our people that are qualified. Um, so we, JP Morgan funds that and our executive sponsor has ensured that we demonstrate the, to our, in, our employees that we, if you qualify, we will invest in you and we will give you the opportunity to get to reinvent and to race your models uh, uh, at, the, at the event we are at. So very important that you've got an executive sponsor that really backs the program. They'll also ensure that if you need additional equipment, you can get it. They'll help you get access to specialist teams if you require it. Uh, and they will talk about it um, whenever they walk around to the various different places that they visit to make sure that people know about your program uh, and are interested. You're going to need a, a, a learning program. Uh, I've mentioned the, the, the driving license that we've done this year. You'll need a structured program. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, I've split the next few sections into racing, learning, and innovation so that we can talk about that. Um, you're going to have some, need to have some rules. Are you going to do, you're going to need, you'll need to decide are you going to do virtual or physical racing. Uh, we have a racing committee, and that is really because I want to ensure that there was consensus amongst the group as to what those rules were, and there could be no arguments about that. You are going to need to consider spend. Um, it's really, really important in the public cloud uh, that you consider spend, um, and you'll need to get your racers involved with that so that they understand what they're spending. It's one of the learning pieces that come out of the program uh, that they realize that when they move to the public cloud, the developer is, is responsible for the spend, not the finance department or the budget holder, because they're not the ones pressing the button that can bring up uh, rather large servers very quickly. We have a professional uh, division. Uh, they compete externally. Uh, they mentor internally. Um, our top racers immediately wanted to race the best. Uh, some of them are here today uh, around the globe, uh, the external racers, and one of them uh, stepped up to lead that, that group. And um, uh, we 
at the, in the middle provide guidance and some extra funding for those guys uh, so they can race. Ethics. Again, very important that you don't break yourself into jail by sharing code or accepting prizes that your company policy does not allow you uh, to, to accept. Swag is good. A sports car with an AWS badge on the side of it, not swag. But, shame that that may be. Um, innovation, uh, I've mentioned, our, our pros run that. Uh, and again, it's important and you will find that they can't help themselves but start to innovate when you go live with this program. Uh, event leads. So the event leads are the people that will make your program successful. It's their passion and drive, and I've got uh, some here and some over here. It's their passion and drive that make it really exciting in the cities or locations that they are, are doing it in. And they will drum up the business for your program and make it a success for you. I'm going to have a drink. Not that sort of drink. So we're going to talk about racing uh, for a couple of seconds. Not that it's about the racing. But it is really. OK. So on the right-hand side, you can just see the cit cities or, or regions where we um, participate uh, in the program. Your, each of our cities holds their own event. And the top three uh, the participants or finalists from each city make it into our global finals, which I said we run in October. Um, as I mentioned, the, the event league is crucial to the success of that. And it's in, from our perspective, it's really important that they are there on the ground because they understand what's going on in that particular location. And especially with a physical track, you need people there to be able to manage it. They will publicize the program. They will identify participants. They will assign participants to teams. They will allocate teams to AWS accounts. Um, we use roles in uh, AWS, uh, so we're currently not able to use the AWS uh, multi-user tool. Uh, that is something, though, we're going to do a deep dive on next year. We will probably publish a paper on that, Adam, thank you, uh, so that we can exp tell you how we find that works in, a, in an organization uh, at scale. Um, we also encourage EC2 instance usage, as I said, so the spot instances, uh, again, to reduce that cost. It makes it much cheaper, which is how we're able to, to, to scale it up so much uh, and make it a learning experience. And again, that's one of the reasons why um, we use individual AWS accounts for our races. Um, they can automatically be created. Uh, we allocate them to the cities. We allocate the people to the teams. Um, we use teams so that, again, we've got four or five people collaborating in a team rather than just one person by themselves. Um, they will, they will also um, encourage, should have put my teeth in this morning before I came up. They will also make sure that there's awareness of the global training. We run global training for introductory and intermediate level. There was no point on doing that uh, on a per city basis. Um, and they will uh, arrange drop-in sessions uh, for your local participants so that they can come and ask questions. It's really important that the, uh, your participants have a regular touch point so that you can see that they're on progress. And again, that's also one of the reasons we put together the, the driving license, so that they had a scheduled list of things that they could attend and do and achieve, and they were led down the garden path, as it were, to success. I should have written that down. Um, they'll also uh, arrange for virtual uh, community races in the, in, the, uh, in the organization, and they'll monitor progress and spend. Our spend is uh, regional. Uh, they've got their own budgets that they're responsible for. Again, passing that on so they need to learn about finance in the public cloud, and they'll host, to say, any physical races. They'll also host any local events. Um, I'm going to tell you that the highlight of my year before this, obviously, um, was we had a cyber camp in Bournemouth uh, where we had 28 students come and visit us. Um, they're autistic students. Um, they came for us for a week doing this cyber camp, learning about technology. And we used Deep Racer throughout that week. And what the benefit of that was is we could do an hour with them. They could get excited, look at the track, go away, do some programming, train their models for a period of time. And then we'd come back the next day, see how it's done, and then progress that throughout the week. The enthusiasm and talent of these students is phenomenal. And I, I ask any of you, if you get the opportunity to get outsiders in to use your tracks, and we'll be doing more of that ourselves next year, um, please do so. You'll find it incredibly rewarding. Um, and it, it, it really is a great event for uh, everybody that's involved. We also use it for our expert engineer program. 
So for our budding expert engineers, we have a specific program to bring them up to the next level and give them the skills that they, they need. Uh, and they all turn up thinking that for this particular session to learn about reinforcement learning and deep racing, and it's going to be great, the car's going to go around the track. What they don't realize, we're not teaching them that, that's what they're doing. We're teaching them about agile uh, practices. We're t talking to them about uh, customer requirements, non-functional requirements. So when they're going, I've, my car was really fast, I won, didn't I do well, customer? The customer goes, well, no, I wanted a red car. You didn't ask me what I wanted, that I wanted a red car. I wasn't worried about winning, I just wanted a red car. Or I wanted to hug the center line. And that's what the program's for. They don't know that, they think it's all about the machine learning. So of course their head's down having fun. But that's the power of the platform, is that you can use it to teach uh, other aspects. The pinnacle of the year, racing year, is the Deep Racer Championships at reInvent. Final was uh, viewed this morning. Uh, it was last night, or, but the, most of the racing was yesterday. Um, that's what we're aiming to. It starts at the bottom uh, with the city preparation of what we've spoken about, getting that all set up and ready for them. Uh, top three cities then go through to the global final. Uh, they have three months to run their program, and, uh, to train, do that training, train their models, do that, get, get their finals out of the way, and then they pass over their top three uh, participants to us. We use a different track in our finals to ensure that there's no overfitting of the model. Um, and then we give them a month uh, to enter a community race, which we use to do the seeding, so we can split them up into different heats, and I will touch on that briefly a bit later. We then export their models, uh, from the S3 buckets that they put them onto. We run evaluations on those models so that we have times. And then we will then uh, render the videos that you're gonna see in a moment uh, so that they all look like they're racing on the track at the same time uh, in, the global, uh, in the Deep Racer Stadium that we've seen. And then we render those heats and we render the final. And then on finals day, we play the five heats in the final uh, and we have everybody, uh, 350 people I think uh, were on the meeting last year. Um, and then, we, they, and then the winner has a month to prepare for reInvent. Uh, and Chris, uh, this year's uh, champion, um, uh, is here at reInvent because of the work that he's done um, throughout the year. So let's talk a bit about the internal racing. Um, you're going to need to determine the format of the roles and set some rules uh, for, the, for, the, for the, the races that you're running. You'll need to determine if you want to do physical or virtual racing. If you're doing physical racing, you need to worry about the track. You've got to find somewhere to fit it. The 2018 track that we use is five meters by eight meters. Most of the new ones, I think that all the new ones are much bigger than that. Uh, you'll need a barrier, you'll need a Wi-Fi network, you'll need cars, those cars need calibrating, uh, you need batteries. Um, so it, and those, you know, it, it's, it's more work to run a physical race, but very rewarding. Um, if you are running physical races, it's really important, uh, no matter where the models are coming from, that the, it all takes part on the same physical track. Because of the lighting and the atmospheric differences between tracks, you can get very different times, so it's very fair that you do it in the same way. If you're doing virtual racing, and this is the best place to start, uh, you'll need to decide the race type. Uh, we only really do time trials internally because it takes less training times. Uh, we don't do head-to-head -head or object avoidance at this point, although the pros obviously do that for their uh, external racing. Rules, are you going to limit the amount of training time for a model, the amount of spend that you can do? Um, are you interested in waypoints? Uh, we certainly were. Uh, the, the, benefit, benefit, the benefit of having those uh, against, is it really giving you a generalized model? Uh, and any other rules that you may want to come up with, that's what the raising committee do. They set the, the standards for all of that work. Let me touch on um, seeding briefly. Um, as I said, we run in 22 cities, so we've got a maximum of 66 uh, finalists. Um, we run the monthly com uh, community race, which you'll see on the left-hand side here. Uh, that runs for a month. Um, this is all you really need to do to start, is to have a community race running for a month or a period of time where everybody can enter it and watch it live. That's a good starting position. Uh, I'll be telling you later to start small. Um, and then what we do is when we run the event um, with the seeding, we then the top five goes into heat one, two, three, four, and five, and then the next five come across and down, and we layer the people across the different heats so that we get a mixture of, uh, of, of uh, a quality of races in those different heats to make it fair so we haven't got all the best races in, in one particular team. 
Um, and then uh, they submit their models, as I've mentioned. Uh, they export them to an S3 bucket, uh, and then we evaluate those, uh, taking it forward. This is actually from one of the, the slides that we do when we run the presentation. Um, you can see on the uh, left-hand side uh, that you can see the two, the two races from uh, Heat 1, Heat 2, and Heat 3, uh, London Wacky Races at the top there. Uh, that's Chris. And at the bottom, and this is quite important if you're going to run multiple heats and then a final, um, we have the provisional next fastest qualifiers from the heats move into the final. And why that's important is, is it keeps people's interest as you go through the different heats. So if you're a Bournemouth racer and you qualified as the next fastest qualifier in heat one, am I still there in heat two? Am I still there in heat three? And your, your local supporters will also be watching that and it keeps that narrative through, through the event at the end. Okay. So this is a pretty slide. And um, this is pretty much because um, it, it's a very much highlight. It's there for a photo if you want to take a list of the steps that we go through for our finals. Um, whilst we're looking at that, again, I just want to touch on the local rivalry as being the key motivator. And it's that key motivator that inspires people to want to go and learn the other tools. Going and learning about log analysis is not particularly exciting. Learning some log analysis because you desperately want to go a little bit quicker and you want to understand what your car is doing is phenomenally important. Um, and if we're talking about rivalry, um, Chris said to me, who's, who's our global lead, he came third in the London finals. And he was like, oh, why am I third? And it was him trying to get faster to beat the London finals in the final that made him win the thing overall. Um, so that's just a picture opportunity. OK, we've talk, talked about our internal program. Let's have a quick chat about the external uh, racing. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, the London Summit. Uh, we raced in London and came third, uh, and that got our racer in London, Adam, uh, into the regional finals, which he won, and that's why he's made it to reInvent. On the right-hand side, you can see uh, the Singapore Summit. Uh, our two best racers, uh, Roger and Yusef from Hyderabad, uh, so that's Rogue and Ace to you, um, traveled from Hyderabad to Singapore, visited our teams in Singapore, and uh, spoke uh, with them and mentored them, uh, and attended and came first and third uh, in, in the summit. Why that's important, um, they need to race externally because that's how you qualify for reInvent. You go to your summits where you race online every month. Uh, you're racing against the best, um, and then you can qualify and, and come here. But it's also important about networking, sharing knowledge, meeting other technical uh, people and talking to them. And it aids brand recognition. If you look on any of the charts, you'll see the JPMC dash, the city that they're in, dash the name of the team so that you know who you're, who you're up against and we can be seen to be there. And it shows people that we're an innovative firm to work for. It helps us retain technical talent, but also attract talent from uh, externally that we want to bring in. We want to find people that have a passion for technology. We want them to come and work uh, for JP Morgan. And again, these are the open and pro divisions. Um, I did the maths before, but I've forgotten what it is. But there's over 50 races there uh, that are racing externally in those uh, open and pro divisions. Uh, I think each month, the top 10% uh, of races from the open division move to the pro division. Uh, we're very active in that. Uh, again, it gives us the ability to see how we're performing. OK, it's a learning program. It's not actually about the racing. So uh, let's take a moment to talk about the learning. So we've split the learning into four key areas. Um, AWS Cloud is obviously very important. It gives you exposure to the console, uh, EC2 instances, EC2 spot instances that's very important, S3, uh, S3 buckets, SageMaker, and Spend. Um, Obviously, data analytics is very important. If you're not doing log analysis, you're guessing how your models are performing. All you know is it was quicker or slower than it was before. You don't know the reasons why. You don't know how it's being rewarded. You don't know what the car's doing at any particular point. Python is very important. You will need to code. The examples that AWS give in the console are very powerful. It's a great way to start. Um, and that will get you around the track. But obviously, as you start getting better, you'll start using more complex techniques, uh, like looking for the racing line or progress over steps being uh, two of the main ones. Machine learning uh, is obviously uh, the fourth area. Understanding how reinforcement learning works uh, is pretty fundamental, uh, as is understanding the magic behind hyperparameters, uh, mystical hyperparameters, I should, uh, I should say. 
Okay, so this is the Deep Racer driving license. These are links to some of the training that uh, we uh, ask our um, uh, staff to do. Um, it's in its infancy. Uh, we introduced the bronze driving license this year, so it's bronze is basic. Next year we're looking to do uh, silver and possibly gold. Um, and the participants have to complete some specific training courses and provide proof that they've done it. So the first one is obviously Introduction to Deep Racer. It's available on YouTube. We've taken that and added some JP Morgan specifics to it, i.e. how to request an account, how to request the access. Intermediate uh, the Deep Racer, uh, Dom Barber is a uh, AWS evangelist. Um, this is his video here. Uh, we have a version of that that we use with very similar slides. In fact, we probably use some of his slides. Um, again, very powerful. It gives you that, your, all your races that, that base knowledge that they need to be able to compete. We also uh, ask that they do training on certain AWS services, and this is quite important. Uh, we include um, EC2 instances and S3 on that. Uh, we use a specialist training provider that provides all of our cloud training, and we've specified some, I think it's four specific courses that they need to complete. Or just provide us with the AWS certification that you have, and then you don't need to do the courses because you already know that, that, that aspect. Um, Python. Again, important, um, loads and loads of online courses available for Python, uh, for introductory ones. Uh, you'll need to consider potentially uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, 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 Notebook Training, Panda, Numpty, uh, and Plotty frameworks for your more advanced users. So we, um, are, we've got two tools I mentioned earlier that we've open sourced. One is the Guru tool that provides visualization of log analysis. Uh, as part of our training, they need to prove that they have installed that and used it. You can choose other log analysis tools that you like, but again, log analysis is important within machine learning so that you understand how your model is performing. Um, we use the Guru tool because we created it and we want them to use that. Um, Deep Racer on the spot, uh, again, we want to prove that they've installed it and provide proof of usage. Um, I will talk more about those uh, products uh, in a moment. Uh, but we've open sourced and made them available to the wider community uh, to enable us to give back to you guys uh, and, enable, and you can make the savings uh, that we've been able to make. Uh, also, we ask that they complete a sub 20 second lap on the rogue circuit. Again, that's just about proving that you've taken that learning on board and that you're able to put it together in the, in the real world. So the bronze is not deep rocket science, but it will give your participants the base knowledge they need about the public, about the public cloud. So, if I'm totally honest, innovation was a surprise. Um, but they just can't help themselves, um, especially the professional races that are incentivized because they want to go faster in building those, those additional tools. You know, it's not just about the reinforcement learning program. It's all sorts of innovations and collaborations. And you've seen the track that we've created. I'll show you part of a race coming up. Uh, people have gone out and they've created quizzes and they've created the, you know, the, the videos that you've seen and the, the, the racing environment that we use. Um, and you know, that, that's the, the kind of innovation that we find. We then find it wherever it's happening, bring it centrally, and then share it within the organization and then wider if we can. And that program is there to design to spot that and help them do that, get them through the process of how we open source uh, some software. And yeah, I didn't mention the portable barrier, but we'll come back, we'll come onto that and later when I, when I show you where we are with that. And you can spot the deliberate mistake with the portable barrier, not you guys in the front row. Okay, so Deep Racer on the spot. Um, cost avoidance is key to being successful in the public cloud. I mentioned turning development servers off at the weekend. You can leave it running over the weekend if you like, but if you're not using it, you're just wasting your, your money. Um, so EC2 spot instances allow us to train uh, uh, for, for up to 90% cheaper than doing it on an EC2 server. If you're training in the console, I think it's $3.50 an hour. If you train on an uh, EC2 instance, it can be as little as $0.22 cents an hour. That's a massive difference in cost. And that's what allows a number of our racers to do that much more training. Basically, it's a number of cloud formation templates um, that create EC2 spot instances. It has many advantages. Uh, it allows us, to, allows us to set up custom action spaces. It trains much faster. Uh, you can have more workers. 
uh, ability to increment your training. Uh, and it's built on uh, Lars's uh, Deep Racer for Cloud platform, which again is really, really uh, important and a great piece of work that uh, he has put together um, that really allows you to come out of the AWS console and start using the native AWS tools. Highly recommend uh, you, you take a look at that and, and make, uh, make use of it because then you're starting to not just to be talking about Deep Racer, you're now talking about the wider suite of ap applications that you want to use. Very, very valuable. So Guru Visualization um, uh, was, was created uh, in London uh, and it allows uh, log analysis um, of what your of visualization of the log analysis, and it's vital, as I've mentioned. If you're not doing this, you're guessing at what your uh, applica your your model is doing. Uh, it's an interactive, uh, detailed analysis tool for the AWS Deep Racer logs. You export your logs to an S3 bucket. You point Guru at them. It will bring them in and then provide the visualizations uh, that you can see here. You don't need to write uh, any pseudo code. You just download the logs. If you look at the top right hand corner, um, you can see that that's showing you exactly what the car is doing on the track at any one time, which way the wheels are turning, what rewards it's getting, and that's really, really vital when you're doing log analysis or when you're trying to go quickly. If you look at the chart on the bottom right, you, there's a heat map. Uh, the, the, the brighter the light, the more times the car is going over that particular part of the track. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner that it's a little bit wayward. It's not quite so bright white, it's a bit all over the place. Well, with a log analysis tool, you get to see that. This, you can then look at what the car's doing on that track, how it's been rewarded at that part of the track, and then make your changes to the model that you think will affect that in a more positive way. Again, really valuable uh, uh, to, to be able to do that, and that's why we've asked, uh, part, put that as part of our Deep Racer uh, learning program. We've seen the Deep Racer International Speedway. You saw me get excited at the beginning uh, as I come onto the stage. I always get passionate when I hear that. Uh, we used Blender, which is a free and open source to, uh, tool uh, that creates it. Um, hang on a minute, if I press that button. There we go, movement. Okay, so you're watching one of the heats from this year's races that we did in our finals. Um, what you'll see is when we run our finals, uh, you'll have myself and our executive sponsor uh, talking and, and commentating. Uh, Blaine and Ryan have no fear for their jobs. They'll be fine. We'll stick where we are. Thank you very much. Um, and whilst we're doing the commentating, the people that are watching can see the race. And what it does is it makes the cars look like they're all on the track at the same time. Uh, they're not. It's just a visualization. If the car, so they won't bump into each other. But if they go off track, there is a fun explosion and the wheels continue without the rest of the car. For the first couple of years, we just had leaderboards and a community race. This is more advanced stuff that we've done because we had teams that were interested in creating the videos and the heats. Um, what it does uh, is it takes the log files from each of the cars and just plots the X, Y coordinates on the map. Uh, so it sucks that into the tool, uh, plots it on the map, and it looks like the cars are all there. You might notice when it goes across um, the start line that there's a jump, and that's because it's now using the next evaluation of the next lap, so it's starting from scratch. Um, we've got a whole load of um, updates we want to make to this, and we're going to see if we can uh, productionize it this year and release it. Uh, it is out there now. It is uh, in, in GitHub if you want to have a look at it. Uh, it's not um, production ready at this point. But this is how we run our finals. This is what it looks like. Uh, and we show all the various events. Uh, and it really does. There's an, oh, there we go. That must have been a car from Bournemouth, our local rivals. OK. So let's just talk about a couple of the um, supporting work streams. Ethics. And I call it ethics for a reason. Um, you need to share ideas, share knowledge, don't share code. Uh, that's quite key. Um, I'm sure you've got very explicit rules uh, and security mechanisms around code management. Um, we have to be very careful with that. Uh, we notify our compliance lead of any prizes won before they're expected, uh, before they are accepted. Uh, accepting prizes is a, a minefield. You need to be very careful of that. Swag can be accepted. We can accept cars. We can accept, uh, accept uh, entrance to reinvent because it is an educational program. Uh, obviously, we can't accept cash. Um, 
uh, you know, so you've got to be very careful when you're looking at that to understand your rules. And whilst that's important, um, and your, your company will have published those centrally, I would strongly encourage you as part of your program when you set up your collaboration site, make sure you've got the rules there that are appropriate for your, for your, your event so that it's easy for your racers to look at so there can be no misunderstanding as to what you can and can't do. Um, don't break yourselves into jail, that's the key. As I mentioned, a sports car with an AWS badge on it is not swag. Um, Ethical racing, we ask our competitors because we're training, uh, we're training them and using them as part of the program not to set up external accounts and start racing against us. I think that's fair. Uh, if they want to do that, they're more than welcome to, but then we don't want them to compete internally as well because that gives them a, a, a two, two goes or bites at the, at the, at the cherry. And commentate, commentate, uh, commenting externally, again, uh, really important. Your firm will have its own guidelines, but make sure that your racers understand what they are uh, and if they can compete, uh, uh, comment externally uh, or not. Again, uh, you don't want to break yourself into jail. Finance. Okay, so we spend less than $100 per participant per year. And you should only spend as much as you need to uh, to make your, uh, make your program viable. You must, must, must watch the pennies. I've mentioned finance. I've probably lost half the audience, so I'm going to say that again. You must, must, must watch the pennies. You'll only know how important it is to watch the pennies when you haven't watched the spend for a couple of months, and then you go and look at it, and you realize how much people have been spending. Um, when you move to the public cloud, there's a fundamental change in responsibility for spend. It moves from your finance department, who will evaluate your request, get your manager's sign off, they'll approve it that it's covered in the budget, and then they'll put it out to tender before you get the equipment in, to the developer, who on a Friday night, just before he goes home, will decide he wants to bring up three very large things, extra large things, because I'm a developer and I must have this. Oh, hang on, it's five o'clock, I'm going home now. That is, they're now spending your money by leaving that running over the weekend. It's critical that you're keeping an eye on that. So what does that mean in, in uh, Deep Racer terms? Now, I'm going to do some maths here, so bear with me. So our pros typically will train their first model for a couple of hours. I'm going to lose my voice in a minute. That's $7. But say you've got a new guy who goes, well, hang on, I'm not going to train it overnight. I'll train it for 10 hours. Well, that's $35 you've just spent. But actually, you can train three models at a time. Well, that's $105 they spent instead of $7 that a pro would do their model for to get that first view that it's making going in the right direction. So again, really important that you're, 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 you're managing that. And again, one thing you must recognize with the public cloud, it's exponential. Three times training for 10 hours, say they decide to do it seven days a week, and you've got 100 users in your program, I'll ask you a question, how much is that in a week? Don't, don't, don't shout out, I'll tell you. $73,500. As soon as you start multiplying those out, the, the costs become exponential. Really important that you keep an eye on it. And AWS, they know this, they give you all of the tools that you need. Budget alerts, cost explorer, you need to use those, you need to teach your participants these tools because it's really important that they get that as part of their learning. They need to know that they recognize how much they're spending. Counting beans will never be as much fun as racing cars, but quite important, very important. Spot instances are your friend. Okay. How do we get you to the starting line? I'm doing this talk because I want you to race. I want your organizations to have their own deep learning, deep racer learning program. I want you to be able to train your guys and I want you to get them out uh, racing and participating and learning. Start small. Find volunteers that will help with the various work streams. Make sure they know what their responsibilities are. Find an executive sponsor. So important you have a good executive sponsor that will give you that backing that you need. Determine how your participants are going to access the Deep Racer so they can train their models. You will, you will have implemented your access to the public cloud in different ways. You'll need to work out how they get access to Deep Racer within that. Get a budget. Manage the budget. Watch the budget closely. 
Go virtual. I would not start with physical racing. Physical racing is great. It's a lot of work. You'll need to do it if you want to get to reInvent next year, because reInvent will be physical again next year. But start virtually. It's much easier to set up. You can set up a, a, a virtual race. I've given you the training that you would need just to start your guys off and get them going. Start small. If you start small, people will find out about it, and then it will grow, and then you will need to find more volunteers uh, to help you out. You'll need a collaboration page um, so that you can, everyone can see what you're doing. You can publicize the links to, links to uh, all of the various trainings and uh, notifications that you need. Really, really uh, important. You know, Deep Racer you know, provides a platform to bring people together to learn, to collaborate and innovate. But it's not just about racing the cars. It has taught people about finance and building videos and creating learning programs and hopefully keeping people awake at reInvent on an afternoon when we're talking uh, publicly. Transitioning to the public cloud requires your staff to think differently. DeepRacer provides a platform that allows them to learn some basic skills which enables that. Identifies people with a passion for the public cloud and makes it fun to participate in. DeepRacer is at the forefront of making us a cloud-ready organization. Come and join us and remember, it's only a race if you're winning. Thank you very much. Thank you.